Welcome back to another FPL video and podcast. This will be the best goalkeepers in Fantasy Premier League. I'll be providing a top 10 and ranking them in order. But of course, some of them are malleable and you can change the positions. And it's going to be very difficult. We're talking about very fine margins, particularly in this position where not as many points are scored as the outfield players. I'll be doing the same thing for every single position. The defenders, midfielders and forwards. Also best budget players, players to avoid and best differentials. There's a lot of content headed your way over the next month or so so you're provided the ultimate fantasy Premier League coverage head of gimmick one smash the like button and subscribe for new if you enjoy the content let's get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards new goals like 30 foul subscribers but without further ado let's jump straight into it at number 10, I've gone for Flecken, a 4.5 million budget goalkeeper. And in that particular video and podcast for the best budget players, I'm not going to cover Flecken again, but instead I'll show you other 4.5 million goalkeepers. And if any 4 million options rise to the surface, they'll also be covered at that point. But Flecken has 13.3% ownership, only seven clean sheets for Brentford last season in his debut campaign, 115 saves, 12 bonus points, he even got an assist and 119 points overall. I think Brentford will keep more clean sheets this season, maybe not by much. And whilst Brentford might not offer the same value in this position as they did with David Raya a couple of years ago, I still think Flecken is arguably the best 4.5 million goalkeeper in the game. But there's one or two more covered in this particular video on podcast and they're high up in the list at the moment. Now, if you look at Flecken's start in the next four game weeks, it doesn't look particularly great with Liverpool away and Manchester City away. But the two home fixtures look really promising against Crystal Palace and Southampton. You'd probably back Brentford to keep one clean sheet at the very least in that four game time period. And longer term, Brentford's fixtures do get better. But with those opening fixtures against Liverpool and Manchester City in the opening four, I wouldn't go for Flecken at the moment. Another 4.5 million goalkeeper cover today is Jose Sarr with 2.8% ownership and he only kept four clean sheets but still managed to produce over 100 FPL points and typically Jose Sarr is one of the highest scoring goalkeepers every single season with the saves and bonus points potential he still managed to get 134 saves and eight bonus points but it's worth mentioning that goalkeepers aren't favored this season in terms of bonus points because of the changes to that system so for example if a goalkeeper saves a penalty instead of getting 15 on the bonus point system they're going to get nine. So that's not a great change. And the likes of Jose Sarr could suffer as a result. But I expect more clean sheets this time around for Wolverhampton Wanderers and for Jose Sarr. And that's why he's still high up in my list amongst the best goalkeepers in FPL. The opening four fixtures aren't particularly great. And it's Arsenal away to kick things off. But Chelsea and Newcastle at home are slightly better fixtures. Although you wouldn't expect a clean sheet for Wolves in those particular matches. But maybe Nottingham Forest away in Gimmick 3 is where you could expect something from Jose Sarr and in the more difficult games he can still get a penalty save bonus points or saves but I have to stress that bonus points aren't going to be as reliable or consistent with these goalkeepers as they have been in previous seasons. Bern Leno was priced at 4.5 million last time out, but he has seen a price increase to 5 million now, and that's why his ownership is only 3.1%. He kept 10 clean sheets for Fulham last season with 134 saves and 15 bonus points. Whilst I'd expect the saves to be roughly the same, if not more, this season, I think the clean sheets and bonus points will decrease, and I don't expect Leno to better 133 points from the last campaign, but he's still going to be right up there amongst the very best goalkeepers, and to start this season I actually think those fixtures look very decent in the next four and even longer term for the next 12 to 13 game weeks Fulham still have good fixtures overall and you look at Leicester and West Ham at home and Ipswich away I could see one or two clean sheets between game weeks two to four with Leno and that's why he's a very solid option to start this season but we do have 4.5 million defenders from Fulham like Robinson and Castagna who might offer better value this time round. El Divo Martinez has been the best goalkeeper on the international stage. Not so much at club level, but he had one season when he first started off with Aston Villa where he was tremendous and got so many FPL points, keeping over 15 clean sheets, making a lot of saves, getting bonus points. And that's the sort of ceiling we have with the Argentine. But I don't think he's right up there amongst the very best options in FPL for the goalkeeper position, but that could change. And I might be completely wrong about it. Aston Villa making some top signings and that could keep them afloat with the Champions League and Premier League balance they have to strike 
this season. But at 5 million, Emi Martinez still has a very high potential to get a lot of FPL points in certain games. And their opening eight fixtures are very promising. Arsenal at home in gimmick two doesn't look great, but they kept the clean sheet in both matches against the Gunners last season. And Emi Martinez made some great saves to deny his former club. He kept eight clean sheets with the villains. 95 saves, 19 bonus points is very high considering the saves and clean sheets weren't really that good in terms of what he's done previously for Aston Villa and 115 points. So if you're looking at bonus points potential, Emi Martinez will be right up there for any goalkeeper and he's probably the best penalty saver in the world. He mainly does with Argentina, but there have been a few occasions where he has saved penalties for Aston Villa. And if he can do that more often this season, I think Emi Martinez could sneak himself into the top five options in this position. Narrowly missing out on the top five is Anana, who's priced at 5 million once again. His ownership is 7.5% at the time of this recording, and he kept nine clean sheets in his debut campaign for Manchester United with 149 saves and 10 bonus points. So he was right up there for FPL points scored amongst goalkeepers. In fact, his tally was the exact same as Burnt Leno. And the opening fixtures are quite good for Manchester United. There's the odd difficult fixture like Liverpool at home in Gimmick 3, but I could see one or two clean sheets in the opening four, particularly against Fulham and Southampton. Now, in the Brighton fixture, that doesn't look great on paper, but it's a new manager and they might struggle to get things going at the very beginning. But I have to say, Anana is still decent. I would expect an improvement in Man United defensively this season with the signings of Euro, who did pick up an injury against Arsenal in that friendly. So we'll see how things go there. And Anana made a few saves in the penalty shootout. Now, his overall performance wasn't particularly great against Arsenal, but I think he's got a very high ceiling for a goalkeeper despite the changes to the bonus point system. So Inanna is up there amongst the very best goalkeepers in the game, but I think there are five better, starting with a certain player from Chelsea. Originally, I was going to rank Robert Sanchez even higher, but Chelsea have been very shaky in pre-season. You can't judge too much from these friendlies that are going on, but I think it does give you a bit of an insight into how these teams are in terms of preparations ahead of the new season. And Chelsea drew 2-2 to Wrexham and lost 4-1 to Celtic. And Robert Sanchez started both games. Petrovic has a minor injury and Robert Sanchez was expected to be the number one anyway. It seems like Maresca is a big fan of him behind the scenes and he would be the 4.5 million go-to option from Chelsea and I'd still rather go for him over Reese James, Chilwell, Gusto and Cucurella. Any Chelsea defender I think is a step below Sanchez in terms of value and also how nailed on they are because Chelsea have a lot of competition in the other areas. Once Petrovic is available you could argue that's the same case in the goalkeeper position for Chelsea but Robert Sanchez should be the number one and he's got 10% ownership for a reason. Only three clean sheets for the Blues last time out but that's because he was injured for a big portion of that campaign and Petrovic came in, did a solid job, and Sanchez made 53 saves, got seven bonus points, and 59 points overall. Chelsea have one of the most difficult opening fixtures you could ask for in Manchester City at home, but from game mix two to eight, their fixtures look great on paper. All of them mark green on the fixture difficulty rating on the FPL website, and Robert Sanchez remains a solid option in goal. The forgotten man in this position is Nick Pope for me. With 5.8% ownership, his price has been reduced from 5.5 million to just five, which I think is a very healthy price tag. Now with Newcastle, we have so many different ways of covering their defense with Lewis Hall, Dan Byrne, Trippier, Fabian Scher, and Botman once he returns from injury. But Nick Pope might be the very best in terms of value. He should be nailed on, and he is the number one goalkeeper as things stand. You have Dubravka and Vlako Dimos challenging that position, and Newcastle are linked with yet another goalkeeper, with Ramsdale being one of the biggest figures who are linked to the tune. But Nick Pope kept six clean sheets for Newcastle last season, 43 saves, just the one bonus point, and 57 points overall, but he has done really well in previous campaigns, particularly when Newcastle finished fourth and qualified for the Champions League the season before last. Their opening fixtures are great for the first four game weeks. Then it gets a big mixed bag, but I think one or two clean sheets is possible against Southampton and Wolves, and who knows, their record against Tottenham is incredible at St. James's Park. Mainly from an offensive perspective, they might concede a goal in that game, but Nick Pope keeping a clean sheet against Tottenham wouldn't be out of the cards either. So so I think Nick Pope is one of the best goalkeepers to start this season unless Newcastle sign another goalkeeper who could usurp him. The 5.5 million price tag might be enough to put you off, 
but Allison is always up there for FPL points. He even gets goal contributions, which isn't too relevant for a goalkeeper, of course. We look at saves, bonus points, and clean sheets, but it's something else that Allison can provide you from time to time. And he's the last goalkeeper to score in the Premier League. It happened a few years ago, but Allison just has a bit something about him, and that's why he's priced at 5.5 million, playing for one of the best teams in the country. And Liverpool's opening fixtures are fantastic. It's a great way to open Arnest Slot's Liverpool career, and he could go off to a flying start with fixtures like Ipswich Town, Brentford and Nottingham Forest in the opening four and two of those are at home. Allison's ownership is 11.1%. Eight clean sheets is a bit underwhelming considering what Liverpool have done in the past, winning a Premier League title and constantly fighting Manchester City until the bitter end. They need to do much more than eight clean sheets to go right to the wire. 83 saves for the Brazilian, nine bonus points and 107 points overall. Alisson is third in my ranking. He could arguably be even higher, particularly to start this season with those opening fixtures for Liverpool. This was a very tough decision to make, but I've gone for David Raya at number two in the goalkeeper rankings. And the main reason why he isn't top is because of the limited saves potential. I think he'll deliver more saves this season, but I still think he'll keep the most clean sheets, get the most FPL points. But in terms of pure value, I think there's one goalkeeper who's slightly ahead of him in the pecking order. And you look at Arsenal's opening fixtures and that's enough to put me off. So David Raya is number one, unfortunately, but you have to say he's got a great chance or great case of being that number one pick in the goalkeeper position. He missed six games last season due to Ramsdale being the number one at the start of the campaign. And also Raya was ineligible to play against Brentford where Arsenal kept the clean sheet across both matches. So Raya really could have been the highest scoring goalkeeper last season. And he kept the most clean sheets, won the golden glove and had a very solid campaign despite a few mistakes here and there across all competitions. Raya is still an excellent choice. You could argue Saliba, Gabriel, or perhaps a Calafiori. And these Arsenal defenders offer better to value despite being more expensive in the cases of Gabriel and Saliba. Ben White at 6.5 million is still a great option I'll discuss in future videos and podcasts but Raya is the cheapest of the lot and if Arsenal keep as many clean sheets as last season if not more then David Raya is still going to be right up there amongst the very best goalkeepers in the game. At number one I'm going for Jordan Pickford, who was the highest scoring goalkeeper in FPL last season with 153 points. The second most clean sheets, only David Rye kept more. But that 0.5 million difference in price tag between those two and also Pickford's saves potential, that's what's made me go for Pickford instead. And Everton's opening fixtures are far superior to Arsenal's, particularly in the first eight game weeks. And even going beyond that to the first 12 to 14, Everton have very good fixtures up until December, basically. They face Tottenham and Aston Villa away in the opening four, which doesn't look great. But Pickford can still make plenty of saves and rescue something, maybe three or four points in one of those matches. And clean sheets are possible in fixtures like Bournemouth at home in game week three. So Everton have excellent fixtures to start this season. Pickford is only 5 million. He has gone up in price by 0.5, but the saves, clean sheets, bonus points potential are all there. I would expect a decrease in clean sheets and bonus points this time round for Everton, but Pickford will still be up there in the top three or four high scoring goalkeepers if he can stay fit and if Everton can make a few good signings in the outfield positions. And there we have it, the top 10 best goalkeepers all covered ahead of the new season. And there are even more options in this position and I'll discuss them in the best budget players, differentials and players to avoid videos and podcasts. So keep your eyes peeled by smashing the like button of this video, getting it to over 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 30 subscribers and beyond. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well, Dylan RCM and check all the other links in the description below for my patron and the championships for early access to my videos amongst many other perks. Also join the Discord server, the FPL League, Draft Town, as well as Spotify. Leave a five-star review on my podcast. It goes a long way to support my channel. I wish you all the best of luck for Game Week 1 and enjoy the rest of your summer break. And I'll see you next time.